Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, everybody, welcome. It is uh, Soul Diving Sunday with Shelly Wizen here on Big Blend Radio. It's our new show with Shelly that airs every first Sunday. And as you know, Shelly is the ultimate soul diving guide. She is the founder and CEO of the Soul Diving Institute. She established that to study and teach the art and science of being human. And she works with people as a transformational life coach. She's also the author of a book that you're going to definitely want if you don't have it already. It's called What Do You Bring to the Table? A Savory, Sensory, and Inspirational Guide to Living a Yummy, delicious life. She loves it when we get to say that. Right, Shelly? Yummy, oh, delicious. Yeah. Uh, she's also the author of The Healing Journal and the story of the magical baby grand piano. So you can go to ShellyWizen.com. She's also bringing her good friend Darswell Rogers on the show, who's up in Fayetteville. I think is it Fa now you see I'm getting confused with Georgia because that's Fayetteville, I think. But welcome, Shelly, and welcome, Darswell. How are you? Thank you. Great. Is it? Is it Fayetteville or Fayette? I'm getting confused. It's definitely, it's def it's definitely, Fayetteville. It's definitely Fayetteville. Fayetteville, yeah. Fayetteville, is that going to be more Georgia then? Or maybe I'm saying that wrong too. I, I think it's Fayetteville. It's uh, Arkansas, Fayetteville. I've never heard anyone use it, pronounce it anywhere, any other way. Oh, well, I always mess it up on anything. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got your name kind of right, though, too. But uh, good to have you both on the show. We're going to talk about healthy relationships. You know, February is a month of love. Um, but I think that's so important to talk about relationships kind of in a broad sense, because regardless relationships, whether it's professional, a friendship, a romantic, um, it does start with oneself too. And I know Shelly gets into that, but um, Shelly, how did you and Darswell first meet since you're both at the opposite ends of the country? So Darswell, would you like to uh, share that or? Uh, sure, sure. Absolutely. Um, it, back in 2018, my dad, 94-year-old uh, uh, Marine vet, <clears throat> um, Second World War, uh, passed away. And he had, oh. uh, I, I'll simply say, some unusual uh, requests, including he did not want to have a wake. He did not want to have any sort of service of any sort. And, you know, when when people pass, the, there's some closure that takes place um, with the family. And while we did have a wonderful amount of time with him, um, there just seemed to have been a, a bit of a gap. And I ran across uh, Shelly, uh, who is a death midwife and, and part of the uh, Twilight Brigade. And I simply reached out and I said, you know, would you mind having a conversation with me just about my dad's passing? And we got together for breakfast. And quite frankly, the sparks of just common perspectives and energy and caring kind of grew, grew out of that. Mm -hmm. And we've been friends ever since. Oh, that's See, that goes into healthy relationships right there, even with your father and pursuing things to be better, right? And, um, yes. and you know, also going into, I know both of you are trained in emotional intelligence. You also both coach. So you both definitely have a common bond in there. And uh, Shelly's got a great article, both of you uh, co-authored up on blendradioandtv.com. Everyone, you can see it there. An upcoming issue of Quality of Life magazine. But Shelly, that's interesting too, what you do as, as a death doula, death of midwife, um, you know, is is that's also part of that relationship. And sometimes you have to kind of bond with the person passing pretty fast, right? Well, yeah, if I'm if I'm with the, the person who's passing, yes, sometimes they're unconscious, but um, um, I help the family navigate through the experience so that it becomes a healing experience and not a horrible one. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. So the healthy relationship, let's start with you, Shelly, uh, just before we started recording, you're saying it all starts with a healthy relationship with yourself. Okay, do we have to be perfect? No, absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. Because I'm not going to win. I've been trying for years, but you know, I'm not doing very good in it. <laughs> I, I'm right with you. <laughs> I think the most important part is accepting the fact that we don't have to be perfect. And also accepting the fact that we have a physical part of ourselves and a non-physical part of ourselves. And once we make peace with that, and we have this healthy relationship 
between what I call the human and the soul, which is this non-physical part, then we become in alignment with our highest and greatest good, the truth, the loving intelligence, God, whatever you want to call it. And we feel, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still getting over something. And we feel healthier. When we feel healthier, then we are able to reach out to somebody else and create a healthy relationship. Although I want to say something about that too, because sometimes we don't feel healthy. Sometimes mm -hmm. we need to reach out mm -hmm. to a friend to help us through a certain time. And we all have it. We all have stuff that we go through. We all have whatever processes that we have and things happen and we suffer and we struggle. And, and the most important thing is to be able to reach out and trust whoever you're going to reach out that they're going to hold you. I call it hold the space for you to be human without mm -hmm. judgment, without criticism, without the pointing of the finger and blaming you for feeling whatever you feel and to allow each other to be human. So mm -hmm. it does start with the inquiry about that relationship within, because then we can live from the inside out rather than the outside in. Although we do need help, everybody does. Mm -hmm. We're not immune to needing other people. We're not islands unto ourselves. We're just not. Mm -hmm. We're not created that way. It's about trusting the other person too. And, and sometimes it's very hard to reach out for help. Um, recently, I went through something where, it, you know, somebody did something really wrong to me. And it, it just was a devastating blow for, you know, just years and years of something. And it was a devastating blow in so many ways. And of course, there's anger, right? Anger, frustration, which comes from pain and hurt. And then it was like, then I was a baby about it. Then I start crying like a baby. And I called my friend, Steve, Steve, you're, I know you're listening, Steve. And Steve, you know, he said, no, well, you've got to take accountability of what you're feeling. And I said, I'm sorry. I can't believe I'm being a blubbery baby. I'm crying. What, what's going on? I don't understand. He goes, number one, you've been sick. You've been tired. Have you realized how much you've been doing? Let's take stock here. And he was just the kindest human being. But I felt, I don't know, suddenly like, oh, okay, wait, somebody else is there. I don't have to put my load on his shoulders, but I can communicate just to have some clarity of mind. I think sometimes we need that. And also to, like you said, feel human and um, you're allowed to have emotions. I'm, I've learned. That's, Definitely. Yeah. I was a baby though. <laughs> so what? See, I, that's my, my other, I have some fame, favorite sayings. One of them is, so what? So I what? think you and Nancy, you know, <laughs> yeah, she likes tears, that word. Tears are to the soul what water is to a plant. Mm. Mm. We need yeah. to cry. We need to be able to feel that deeply. That's what love is all about. That's mm. what the heart is all about. And it's okay to have a broken heart. And so what? Mm. It's all part of the human experience. I mean, sometimes I call Dars and I need clarity. And he's so good with being able to see it objectively. Sometimes we need that objective viewpoint. Mm. Because we can't see it within ourselves, And and like Dars, he'll reflect it back to me, what I need to see. And I'll do mm. the same for him. And I just love it. He's, he's one of the most brilliant, kindest human beings and, and a man. He's a role model for what a man can be. Mm. In world and it's it's he's such a beautiful man i always tell him that too i hope you never get tired of me telling that to you uh -huh. well you know i think this is interesting too because uh, dars well i know in your professional career i um, not he has a radio show to grow your business today it's on 99.7 fm uh widu in, in fayetteville north carolina see i said it right um he is also um you know, into uh, what he works with businesses and uh, clients and helps as a coach, right? So on the professional level, that's something I think women have a hard time with in a workplace with relationships and trust issues. And, you know, so like if I started crying at work in the workplace, that's not a, that's, that's a, that's not an emotionally intelligent thing, right? Or do you, can you go to someone in your, you know, have that trust and have the right relationship in your workplace to work through something because I'm you know there's times where 
things can go wrong professionally. I would say that uh, the core of all organizations is the people. Mm. And, and when you are in a position to request that your people become the best possible individual that they can, that's the single best way to get an organization to, to grow and be more successful. And so tapping into your emotions, tapping into your emotional state is actually a positive. And you, you're absolutely right. The idea of, of, of crying at work has been shunned on and looked down upon since the very it's beginning. Weak. You're weak, it's especially weak. if you're a woman. Oh boy. Yeah. But it, but but we we've got to evolve and grow beyond those those old stereotypes. Um, I can tell you without a doubt, since COVID, before COVID, but since COVID, all of my male friends, we rarely finish conversations without saying to each other, "I really love you," and I really appreciate who you are and what you bring. COVID brought that additional sense of 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 the of the uh, fleeting moment to uh, to everybody's life. And if you and so then if you apply that to all your relationships, your personal ones, your professional ones, your friends, and recognize the fact that what I'm looking to do is to squeeze as much positive out of what is what of this moment, this of what's transpiring, and to have and to inspire and to challenge people to be better. And mm -hmm. and that's really the essence of of the opportunity that we're presented with. And it's so infrequent that you hear people talk that way. How can how can I help you to be the best possible version of yourself? Because frequently people don't perceive themselves as being able to get better. They've mm. kind of settled into a reality of who they are. And you know, one of the one of the worst things you can ever say is, well, that's just the way I am. That that is a killer on an opportunity. That's that's a killer for what your soul, what what you are could bring to the world that you're not bringing to the world. And I'll just circle back and say that what Shelly has brought to me is an ability for me to tap into my emotions at a level that I did not before. Mm -hmm. So this notion of, of making uh, things that I would just take for granted, yeah, I did this, or I did that. And instead of saying, wow, Darswell, congratulations, or just saying, yeah, you should have done that. She'll go, yeah, she'll like, that's awesome. That's great. That's you not Why aren't you celebrating that moment? And I'm like, woo, you know, all of a sudden you get this electricity that flows through your body. Says, what, 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 what is she? Yep. Yeah, what's all of this about? I mean, but boy, does it bring energy. Boy, mm -hmm. does it bring what we need as individuals. Let's let's celebrate what's happening. It's empowering. It is so empowering and it's so encouraging. And we don't we don't praise enough. We're mm -hmm. quick on the criticism and we're and we're and we're and we are just so uh so unwilling to say positive things for, for under the notion that that's just what you're supposed to do. And that's certainly the way I was raised, you know, you're supposed mm -hmm. to get an A. So if you get an A, that, that, so we're going we're gonna to come down on you if you don't. And we really need to think about doing the reverse. Mm. The positive talk, um, it, number one, should be genuine, right? And I think that we're out of practice on that. And the more we go, okay, you know, think before we speak, maybe feel and think before we speak. And if we can go, that's what can we do in the positive before we speak, then maybe we start training ourselves to, because we are so full of negativity, right? Isn't that hard? We're wired to be no, no, no. Is that, you know, uh, fright or flight or run and hide or roll over and play dead, right? But, you know, then at the same time, if the more we can be positive, the more that will become like replace the negative stuff that keeps going through. You know what I mean? I think we can change that ripple effect if we want. When you come from the heart, this changes everything. It's a game changer. When you actually become conscious of coming from your heart instead of your head, because the ego sometimes wants to be right more times than not, and will do almost anything to be right pride and then anger. And then that finger comes out because we want to blame somebody else for how we feel. We've talked about that before. Mm. So when you can take responsibility for what you feel and actually give ourselves permission, me too. I mean, going mm. through whatever I've gone through in the last six months, it's really giving myself permission to enjoy. And this is what Dars and I talked about years ago. When we just kind of dismiss an experience as, oh yeah, that was nice, but 
we know inside of our heart of hearts that it was fucking great. Mm-hmm. And we don't give ourselves that. We dismiss it. We dim our light. We dim our emotions. We dim our feelings. And then what happens is we live in this flat line. We flat mm. line. And what happens in flat line? We're not really living. We're kind of semi dead because we're not using the emotions that we have. And the other thing is to be genuinely interested Mm -hmm. in the other human being, genuinely interested. And so that we can, I mean, I give my clients when they get something, they go, oh my God, I never looked at, I give them a standing ovation. I get out of my chair and I give them a standing ovation because we don't get that enough. Mm. We don't give it to ourselves enough. So we tend to dismiss these emotions as not relevant or not Mm. very important. Well, also in going from the healthy side of yourself, your relationship with self, um, you know, I I think there's a way like people can start to really piss you off that you're working with or in a friendship or whatever. There's a cycle. And a lot of times you just, you know, these little pissing yourself off thing can grow. Meantime, you it's, isn't it also because you haven't set a boundary for something that you're not enjoying that isn't beneficial to you? So I think sometimes in um, relationships, we as individuals forget to so- set boundaries and go, this is not healthy for me to stay away from it. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. you know, conscious living is not just flipping a switch and making everything easy. Conscious living is work. It is about being conscious and aware, which means we need to slow down. And if we're, you know, having relationships all over the place and not really taking stock and inventory, like consciousness with them and letting emotions just go haywire up, down, all around, I think that's where the negativity can be in relationships is just not setting actual boundaries. When we come from a human to human perspective and not the roles that we play in life, even mother, daughter. Mm. No, brother. Oh, that's a fun relationship. It is. It is. And there's a lot of history there. There's a Mm -hmm. lot of charge there. But when we, when we take responsibility for our part, come from the heart and accept the fact that each other is a human being with all the same stuff, the same needs. We all need to be loved. We all need to be appreciated. We all want to appreciate. We need to love. Mm -hmm. it's not just we have a need to be loved we have a need to love Mm. when somebody receives our love then it fulfills the cycle when Mm. we receive someone's love or a compliment I have clients that say you know what I I don't believe them when they tell me that I did a good thing I don't believe them I I had that I I Somebody, I, that, I don't know, years and years ago, a man told me that I was beautiful. I started to cry. Oh, he was from India. He goes, why are you crying, Shelly? I just told you you were beautiful. Why are you crying? And I said, because my husband never told me I was beautiful. <gasps> so we have, or my parents or my mother usually stems from the mother's love that we mm. did get or didn't get. Mm. And that's one thing that I have such respect for our relationship with Mm -hmm. Darzo and I, because he is so open to go into those places to look at him, him and his own self to see, wow, I guess I could bring out a little more emotion, more joy in my life. And when someone's open and you say, you know what, it's really interesting right now, I'm feeling really judgy. I want to judge you. I want to blame you. Why can't we say those things? That's the boundary you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When we can admit what we're actually experiencing without feeling like someone's going to crucify us. I mean, if we make a mistake, I don't know about you in some of those relationships, but it's almost like they take the nails and put them in the, in the palms and we're already on the cross. There's like no area Mm -hmm. of forgiveness for that just for making a mistake instead of just made my feet and hands hurt. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I forgot about the feet. (laughs) 
<laughs> wow, but yeah. but I think this is so cool in, in going, you know, Darswell going on your side with this about love, right? So in a professional setting, would you go like, okay, we need to, because honestly, when I think about relationships, I actually go on the professional side, I see corporations and companies forgetting about connectivity with their clients. And I think it's actually become, and we think about the epidemic or pandemic, but I actually think we are really in this era of, we're all walking around with phones, but no one can call each other because you might be spam. You can't get companies to actually have someone on the phone and communicate with you. You must buy according to their FAQs on their website. Where, where, when we talk about healthy relationships, I kind of feel like the professional world needs to adopt what Shelly is saying and go from love. If you don't love your clients, you know what I mean? There's love and respect there. Yes. And you're going to, we can draw a, a line from self-love to um, the love of your workforce to the love and appreciation of your client. And I, and I think that frequently you'll have organizations that will spend a lot of time wanting to talk about the customer experience and how do we improve the customer experience without asking themselves, well, how do I, why would my workforce relate to or care about the customer experience if they don't feel that the experience that I'm having with them is a positive one? And, and so we've, we, we are, and, and technology has, has so taken over in terms mm -hmm. of the presumption of productivity, uh, but, but that sense of productivity is looking at it from a, from a short-term bottom line perspective versus a long-term what's the potential uh point of view and so the, the this this notion of, of of bringing a more humanistic perspective to the entire equation is really a big focus of where i i uh, i focus and so this comes down to purpose and i and i want people to consider what is their purpose as an individual what's the purpose of, of the organization and then what in effect is the purpose you know why would people anyone come and, and do business with us. And when you can connect up and down, and I've got this wonderful image I have for strategic planning in terms of being, look up and down the staircase. If the, if the, if the most, if the, if the, if the, if the, if the, I'll use the receptionist as kind of the, kind of the most junior person in your organization should understand the purpose of what, of, of what the organization seeking to do and why her job exists just like the board should understand it. When you've got that line of sight across an organization like that, which is so counter to the way so many organizations think, you unlock so many powerful things. So then you're gonna be using and leveraging technology in a very different way, because quite frankly, the ability to get to somebody immediately versus having to go through a half a dozen prompts and hope for the best might actually be more productive. And you might actually get more of that person's share of wallet than making them go through this, this uh, matrix that just frustrates the heck out of everybody. But nobody has made that switch yet. And it's because technology and the phone has disconnected us. And there's a presumption when you're just strictly looking at it from a bottom line point of view, that that's the winning strategy. And some of that is, but boy, there's got to be some way to just get out of that queue and say, I want to talk. Can I just please talk to somebody? And, you know, and, and, and can that person have empathy to what it is I'm wanting versus, again, running through a script that mm -hmm. is not tied to what I'm saying to them? So How nice is it when you're going through something with a company, maybe they've done something wrong or whatever, right? Um, maybe, you know, you're car came back with the wrong oil, whatever it is, right? And you can actually call and say, hey, this and this isn't working. And instead of having some argument not being told, oh, go to our website and look up at the FAQs, and then you have a bunch of people getting mad, or the only way you can actually get some help is to go on social media and berate them, which yeah. is now putting everybody in this anger and negative zone. You don't know who's on the other end getting that negativity, Maybe they've, you know, just lost a family member and you don't know. Nobody knows where everybody is when they're starting to communicate. But without real communication, this, I think it, it's become the societal thing. It's like maybe that's why there's so many trolling comments on social media that are so negative because we're not having that true interpersonal connection and we're not being our better selves out of it. And that's where I go, you know, go back to you, Shelly, on this. Start with yourself and then 
look at people like when you do have something go wrong and someone on the other end of the phone goes, oh, hi. Oh, we must have made a mistake. What can we do to fix it for you? You know, we are so sorry. Let's let's do this and that. When you have that and someone is sunshine on the other end of the phone, suddenly you start to feel a little bit of warmth, even if you're in the middle of Alaska during a snow blizzard. If you got sunshine, you get you're getting a little warm. But when you don't, it's like, wow. And I think that's kind of this thing about relationships can be an, a one off conversation on the phone with someone all the way to a lifelong friendship. I see it as all of it being incredibly important to keep the world happy. Yeah, because we want it. We want to be happy. Right. Mm -hmm. So the unhealthy way is to do what you're saying. It comes from a defensiveness. Mm hmm. When you work with a customer, I, I have a lozenge so I don't cough. When you come from a uh, with a customer service representative who's on the defensive, the other person on that line doesn't feel heard. Again, it's a basic need mm. of human beings. We need to be heard. We need to understand that somebody is listening to us, that somebody has respect. And But it comes back to what my book is about. What do you bring to the table? <clears throat> what are you bringing? If you mm. wake up in the morning <clears throat> and you ask yourself, what kind of human being do I want to be today? Ooh. I mean, do you want to be an unkind one, a resentful one, a jealous one, an envious one? A mean I want to be a happy one like the dogs running around here with waggy tails. They're the most exactly. waggy tail dogs I've ever seen. And I keep looking at you going, my, you got a wiggy butt. I want to be a wiggy butt too. So we're walking exactly. around the house seriously going, we got the wiggy butt, which is to me, like we should all have wiggy butts. If we, I don't, I'm not trying to say we're all dogs. Listen, I love dogs. And I think that's, it's one of the best <clears> things, but if we kind of look at having a wiggy butt tail, if we're always, you know, come on, that's happy. We got to have a wiggy butt. Right. We, we, some, I've gone through this too. This is a very interesting experience. Sometimes we wear a badge. We think that suffering and being negative and being prideful and being egotistical is power. Mm. We and and when we when we struggle or we're suffering and we get through it, we play the badge of suffering because we become a martyr so somebody can yes. look at us in a different way. Mm -hmm. And if we do that so much, we just do that all the time. That mm. becomes the pattern of the way in which we behave. And so we have to take a look at what is it that we believe about that? That's why I always bring in those three Bs. Ooh. What do we believe about that? What And how does that affect our behavior? And who we become is based on those two things. Mm -hmm. And so when we stop, take responsibility for our part in that. When you have a, a challenge with somebody, what is your part in it? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. take responsibility for that part. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, oh, you know what? I see where I went off in this. Mm -hmm. But sometimes things escalate so out of control. I get this in my clients that are in marriages or relationships is one thing. They say one thing, it bickers, bicker, 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 bicker. And then it goes into a whole nother place that nobody ever thought it would go. And then they don't talk for days. You yeah. know, it's that ego driven, head driven, I want to be right, you're wrong, instead of heart driven, what's more important? I mean, I know somebody who I happened to be married to at one time, who was very angry, and still thinks everything revolves around him and makes anger and pride more important than love. Mm. That's, that's in constant battle when you're talking I feel like there's a soldier always just at battle mm -hmm. and not really a soldier or a leader taking care of the troops right but in this constant battle which can become very traumatic on yourself yeah you know if, if you think about people coming home from war there's you know the PTSD but for real stuff that's going on but then a lot of it is because you're pushing yourself in this attack 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 so 
eventually you're really attacking yourself, right? In a way, whatever we do to others, we're actually doing to ourselves. Because we're the ones experiencing it. Mm. Well, you had this conversation about, you know, your roles, your ego versus your heart. Uh-huh. And and what comes to mind uh, is uh, a quote I heard uh, a motivational speaker Les Brown say. He said, "Who we are is based on the story that we believe about ourselves." Exactly. And and you have the power, the ability to change that story. And if you are operating as an unhappy person, you have to decide, you know what? I don't want to operate as an unhappy person. If you are operating in a, I'm a victim mindset, well, then you can make the decision. I'm not saying any of this is simple, but you can make the decision and you can go through the process of saying, I'm going to believe a completely different story about myself. And, mm -hmm. and the reality is, is that while that may sound a little abstract, each one of us at various points in our lives said, I want to be, I want to become this. I want to aspire to something different. And, 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 and we, we shifted from being a person who did not know how to ride a bike to a person who didn't know how to ride a bike. That's a, that's a different story. A person who does know how to drive a person who does know how, who does uh, know how to uh, hold down a good job. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a person that you know, chose to aspire to do basketball. I choose to be healthier. You're telling yourself a different story. We've all done it. And you just have to tap into that. And being heart-centered, as Shelly's talking about, coming from here instead of from here is an incredibly powerful place to come from because it gives you energy around doing it. And mm. you need resiliency around doing it. And it requires faith in yourself in, in terms of your capacity to do it. And so just relying on the intellectual you had to do it is incredibly challenging. You really have got to be centered in the middle of, of where your heart and your gut brings to the table if you actually want to change, which mm -hmm. I think is what this is really about. We want to be a different person tomorrow than we are today. And mm -hmm. it, it really is about telling ourselves and believing a different story. Right. I think they've done so many studies about, you know, there's that one about um, a child not having someone hug or hold them. And then, yeah. you know, it, I can't remember the whole story in this, but it basically how it really affects us. And to really take charge, like you're saying, who do we want to be? I wonder about um, journaling and taking time out for oneself. You know, I think about busy moms where, or parents, you know, busy dads, how raising a family and still trying to balance work and, and, you know, prov providing for family and having a good time too, you can, it, it, it's hard to just stop. I, I have friends who've created their own meditation zones, quiet zones in their closet. Just mm -hmm. said, I'm going in the closet, leave me alone. And I'm not that kind of closet, but that kind of closet. Yeah. I'm going away. I'm coming back out in 15 minutes because even 10 to 15 minutes a day could change your life. So any yeah. tips on that, Shelly, for people to actually take stock? Because I think when you don't, that's when it gets weird. Well, what happens is you're then living from the outside in. That's what I call it. You live from the outside in and every circumstance, everything everybody says to you affects you instead of coming from the inside out in that center place where you have a sense of well-being. I think the joy part is being able to have a sustained sense of well-being so that mm. you find ways to ground yourself, to be in alignment with yourself, to listen to your soul's whispers, whatever you want to call it. If you don't know what that is, listen to your intuition, whatever that internal guidance system is to just sit quietly and listen. In the book, I have 11 different, what I call happy, mindful meditations. They're only a couple of minutes. You don't even need five, 10, mm -hmm. 15 minutes. You could need one minute. You could need one second if all of a sudden you go, huh, okay, I need to quiet myself and get myself into a different space. And then what happens is you start meeting other like-minded and like-hearted people. And then you establish these great, fantastic, healthy relationships that I call friends mm. for life, that mm. you just know without a doubt you can call upon and they can call upon you to offer a, um, a feedback that is not judgmental. We step mm. out of the judgment zone 
and we just allow each other to be human. Just like what I was sharing, if you want to express, God, I'm feeling judgmental or I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. Okay, hmm. all right, you're entitled. Well, I mean, we all judge at some point or another. It's not like we're not going to ever judge something. Oh, no. Let's be aware of it so mm-hmm. that we then not attack somebody because we're judging or we're criticizing them or scolding them or pointing that finger, pointing at his finger at somebody and mm-hmm. blaming them for how we feel. And, and yes, taking a few moments here and there is so important because otherwise, what's the point? Well, if we can't do that, what's the point? I want to tell people one, one thing to do is to subscribe. Um, it was on your website and I subscribe where every day you're sending oh, yeah. a little That's note of wisdom. I was like, I remember, I go, okay, what are you doing today? And there's one nugget, very easy. It's not like a lesson. It's like, yeah. hey, Just you know, and it's a really nice way to start your morning off with something positive from Shelly. So ShellyWisdom.com, everyone should go there and do that because that can help you shift. think. Yeah. Yeah, there's one more one day. It just was like, so spot on what I needed to hear. And I'm like, okay, that is so cool. So it's really, you know, I I encourage people to do it because it's a nice start. And obviously your book too. But I, you know, this, this whole thing about really working on yourself to be able to have these relationships. um, Last year was a very interesting year in relationships. Um, My best friend from high school, we went to boarding school together. And of course, you know, we were naughty. And of course, we had our moments. And uh, so we, we were in South Africa together and she's moved to England. I'm here. And um, we finally found each other. I mean, my last name is Smith. It's not easy to find me. <laughs> and we found each other and other friends that, you know, we were in school together and graduated with. And um, her family, her her parents are friends with my mom. It's like Christmas time. We all would go to each other's house. And, you know, it's like a rotating party. It was great. You know, it's, it's a village. And she came to this country uh, last year and I got to go and see her and we haven't oh. seen each other for over 30 years, oh. you know, cause we're getting younger. Yes. But the, we stayed up all night, every night. And she kept yelling at me, you're talking too much. We need to go to bed. And I'm going, Hey, you're talking too much. We need to go to bed. We never went to bed for, for the time we saw each other a few days, right. but it was when you have these kind of relationships, even if we aren't next door to each other and you could check in on your childhood, who you were as a kid, nothing really monumental has changed. We were able, I mean, I think even now as we have our monthly calls, our zoom chats, because we, we pick up immediately and support each other. It goes back to what you're saying, Darswell, when you're with people like that, she's like, okay, we check in on each other's careers, our family, and if anyone's having, oh, I need to do this, I'm trying to work on that. Oh, maybe I know someone who can help you or something like that. It is just, it, and you're holding, it's like an accountability to who we were as teenagers with our goals and ideas, because we both wanted out of school immediately because we wanted to start our own business. We were just, we we're like, everybody just shut, let us go. And so we're holding, we're to this day holding each other accountable but not when I say hold accountable, it's in a positive lifting up. Like in your article, you say, it, this is about lifting up, not lifting down. You know, there's those mastermind groups and things like that. So Darswell, wouldn't you say on the personal and professional, you need your personal friends for your professional side? Uh, absolutely. And, and it, this notion of accountability and having those connections. I mean, Shelly and I tend to, to have a weekly conversation um, and uh, she gets up in the morning and walks it's a little bit later in my day but I typically carve out that time to walk going to talk for 30 minutes to an hour we're going to cover the things that are professionally relevant to us but we're also going to cover the personal things uh, if that's what's really on our mind uh, I've got a couple of other friends that I do very similar uh, interactions with it it is empowering it uh, moves me forward it centers me and you, you do need to find one or more people that can help you and has your interest truly at heart. And as you know, Shelley would like to say, you know, there, there's a non-judgmental space. That doesn't mean that you're not going to tell them when they're not doing the right thing. You know, this is not, you know, uh, sugar right. and honey. This is like, well, wait a minute, I'm, re- I'm going to mirror back to you. You said you wanted to get A, B and C done and you haven't done it. So this is not about being just entirely kind hearted, but, but if you are, 
you, we all need a swift kick in the butt periodically, and then we need a lot of praise. And you just have to know with these people that you're interfacing with that what 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 do they need at that point in time? And whatever you're bringing, you know, or they know that trust and caring is is a core component of it. That's why you're able mm. to be so candid. Mm. And the, the last point I'll I'll make, and just in terms of all these conversations we're having about about being human. Um, and to keep it simple, you have to win the next 60 seconds. If you can, if you can, if you can operate at and, and, and accomplish what you'd like to accomplish the ne- for over the next 60 seconds, that's a win. And then how do you do it over the next five minutes? And then how do you do it over the next 15? So there's the old you, and then there's the and then there's the you you like to be. What what do you need to do right now for the next 60 seconds to move you toward who you'd like to be? You've got to win that before you can, you, you, we've got the visions of the future, but you win it by changing what you're going to do now. Mm-hmm. And so that is the, the, for me in terms of, I think you a little bit asked about, well, what, what can people do? What do I need to do today that will get me where I need to be tomorrow? But a day can be too long. So let's start with 60 seconds and then go to five minutes and then extend it. And to the extent that you can do more often than not what you should be doing versus what you sh- what what you have tended to do in the past, that's moving you forward and that's progress. And that's all oh, we can- that word. You know, that word drives me nuts. Which word is that now? What what did you say? You said the should word. You should. OK. Yeah. Okay. She hates should. should. I'm a big so, language catcher. We do this back yes. and forth all the time. And, 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 uh, and that's, not, that's not an ideal word. You, at, at, at the end of the day, we have to win the minute in order to win the future. So you can't oh, I win love that. Without, without winning the minute. You've got to win the minute first. Oh, I love that. And, and to celebrate that minute, too. Exactly. Yes. That, see, so we can have a tail wag. See, yes. I want the ultimate wiki butt. I swear. Yes. That's it. Exactly. Well, you know, because... How can you be mad at a dog that's wagging its tail? Right. And what are they doing? They're living what? A yummy, Happy, delicious del- life. The yummy, delicious. Well, listen, and by the way, when you get Shelly's uh, book, you've got to make the chocolate cake. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. See, I'm cooking for someone. And what about that is, you know, when we talk about healthy relationships, there's the communication, there's the, the back and forth, the support, but sometimes just that thoughtfulness. Like, you know, when Nancy knows if I'm really, really busy and crazy and all of a sudden she'll go here, I've made your favorite omelet because she's the omelet queen. Talk mm. about yummy, delicious. Oh, Seriously. Right. And she'll go, oh, here, I've, I've done this or someone's made you a cup of coffee. I'm just going to that because this is what we just did. <laughs> but she, you know, there's that in helping each other out or doing something that little extra special something for somebody. I'm not saying you have to buy him a house. It's those little, here, I know you love this recipe. I'm going to the cooking because Shelly's here. And now I want chocolate cake. But like just those little things, right? Really yeah. can go a mile. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, my uh, granddaughter's having a bat mitzvah. In the Jewish tradition, there's a bar and a bat mitzvah when children turn 13. It's a big thing. And so hers is coming up next week and her birthday's next week. And so my daughter's been pretty stressed out and I've not been a hundred percent well in the last whatever, but mm-hmm. you know what? I just woke up and I said, I am going to go over there and make them dinner. So I called her and said, I'm going to make you guys dinner. What do you want? And so I did the salmon thing, whatever. I take this red rice and we do a little sushi, cook the salmon, whatever. And you know what? I felt so good. I felt back in my comfort zone when I'm doing something thoughtful for somebody, I feel happy. Mm-hmm. I feel so fulfilled and, and she appreciated it because she didn't have to do anything. I bought all the food. I came over there and cooked it. I cleaned everything. She didn't do anything. All she did was sit on the couch and it was so gratifying for me to be able to give that to her because what do we have to give? We give of ourselves. Mm-hmm. We give of our time. We give of our it's not like you said, you don't have to buy someone a new house. You give them your time of mm. whatever it is that you're doing. And it's so appreciated. When somebody does something nice for me, I'm like, wow, that's mm-hmm. like, that is so thoughtful. I can't even believe how thoughtful that is, you know? Mm-hmm. And 
I appreciate it. I so appreciate it. And it's fun to do things for other people. And it gets you out of your own funk. If you're in a Mm -hmm. funk, it gets you out because now you're thinking about somebody else's funk and how to get them out of their funk. And then you get out of your funk. You just if you've got a funk, you've got to play some funky music too. That'll help. Ah, I'm plus. just saying, you got to get the music out. I'm serious. You know, but that's the truth. You know, Nancy and I, tra- as we travel the country, we pets it. It's not a money thing. It's all free. Right. It's a, it's a, you know, a, a caregiving thing. And right. I think it's been one of the best things we've ever done in our lives because it's caregiving of these wonderful animals. You're taking care of something for the people who are traveling. They have something. And this relationship, it's, we've had these relationships from caring about their family, basically. You're right. caring about someone's home. And there's an immediate trust that happens between people to do this. It's the most interesting relationship uh, thing we've ever been through. And it's immersive. And I, I encourage people to do that kind of something because it, you, you can't beat that. I don't know. It's, it's just a wonderful feeling. Like, I, it really is. I want to I want to go back to you, Darswell, on that because doing those extra things. Let's. I want to touch back on the customer service and, and going back to pet sitting. There was a lady we were we pet sat for, and we basically drove. It was it was one of these crazy things, where we drove from Florida, I think, to the middle of Texas, and it was only for a weekend, but you know things always change in the pandemic where you're going <laughs> and we still commit kept to our commitment of going there that weekend just for a short time and just you know we love the dogs and then she emails me all upset her one of her dogs which we'd already known and sat for had passed mm. and she's you know and I said well look we'll we're still coming we'll still come and take care of the other puppy and who buried my socks in the garden um, but anyway we'll come she, and she was like, thank goodness it's you. It's someone, you know, the dog knows. And because the dog was upset because, you know, it was a puppy and this was an elder. And um, so we went and the dog wasn't eating. We got the dog to eat. It was just this big thing. While we were there, and I, I'm not doing this to give this company advertising, but I think a good thing is a good thing. Chewy, uh, this is a thing that everybody orders their dog food from and cat food comes all the time. So they had a delivery, but you know what the delivery was? It was a bouquet of flowers and a handwritten card. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? And that's, I think they know that she also fosters dogs and she's like this amazing dog woman. And I was just like, no way. And then, so I photographed it and, you know, messaged it to her and she's in tears. She goes, oh my gosh, you know, so that is going out of your way, I think, than the typical, it's your birthday, you get 10% off. Right. You know, so those kind of things. You think it, that's it a, is. Yeah. Uh, th- those are winning strategies. Um, that's a given, right? That that That's a yeah. winning strategy. They, they've got created a level of loyalty and touch that person in a very special way. How we accomplish that, and this is what makes the future so interesting, we know that that's what we want. That's the experience that our customers are looking for. How do you, within a given organization, accomplish that? That is, that's the secret sauce of igniting the creativity of your workforce to ask them to think differently. Right now, most people are just, they're a little bit of automatons. They walk into the office or their job, they know what the job is, they do the job as it's being prescribed and they go home. And there's no need for them to use their creativity. There's no need for them to think beyond what's required. And generally speaking, if you keep your head down, you can keep your job uh, for life. But that's not gonna win the customer service battle. It's not gonna win the creativity. It's not gonna win the uh, employee retention battle. That's a big battle. In, in particular, the millennials, the Gen Zs, the Gen Alphas that are coming behind them, who have been, um, who fundamentally have been taught by us, because I always wanted, to, when people want to comp- complain about them, I always say, well, who raised them, right? That we, 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 the, the boomers and the Gen Xers uh, taught them to think independently, to have an opinion. And as I have said, 
um, you know, you, you would you you you've seen parents and grandparents turn to the youngest person in the family and say, Tommy, B Betty, what do you want to do today? And whatever they say, the whole family would do it. That never happened when I was a kid. It was seen but not heard. So these young folks have opinions, and, and if you're going to win the day with them as as an as an employee and as a consumer, you're going to have to be responsive to what they're thinking about. And we see that uh, across the board. 20% of the church in the United States failed during the pandemic because they did not know how to pivot in terms of how to in terms of the delivery of uh, of services. These struggles that we are having is because we're still using a top down mentality that a small group at the top can can dictate what everybody else should do, <laughs> and it's not winning. It just no. it, it's not going to win. So, so, and so you've got all these social media companies absorbing all this data about us. The, what they do with the data beyond push back to us negative feedback that causes it to keep our eyeballs, which is what drives it today. The organizations that can figure out how to take that data and say, from a humanistic point of view, how do I deliver value that's really meaningful? They're going to win. They're absolutely going to mm -hmm. win. And so mm -hmm. that's, where really, that's where we're really heading. I think it's interesting too about the retention, um, the workforce retention, people started working at home and that gave them time to actually spend quality time with their family. So you see a lot of employees going into work part-time to the actual office site part-time at home, but it's about this, This, um, I mean, I look at teachers, we have a serious problem in regards to having teaching, uh, the medical system is really in trouble. The education system is in trouble. There's a lot of systems in trouble, but I think exactly what you're saying, it goes down to these relationships. And if we don't have relationships, you can't really have a system because the system is broken. The one thing that can fix it, even when something is broken, like we were saying about customer service, something's broken, call the, the dealership, right? And you get like, oh, welcome, push 10, now push nine. Is this what you want? No, now I'm getting mad. Now I have a blood pressure problem, right? If, even as I'm saying that, I can feel it. <laughs> but if you had somebody actually on the phone, this relate the human relationship, going to that being human relationship is priceless. You can I, get I through to... anything without it. Yeah, yeah, I don't have. I, I don't need for you to solve the problem necessarily, but I at least need for you to understand what it is, express some level of empathy, and put yeah. some sort of program or process in place on whereby it can get solved. Exactly. That is way more valuable than anything else. Yeah. Uh, was I heard? You know, Shelly talked about it. Was I? Am I being heard? That that is just hugely important to people. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll just see. That, and I, I firmly believe that winning organizations are going to be those that figure that out. They're not going to just mm -hmm. be driven by prompt this, prompt that, prompt the other, and then a person with a script telling you whatever they think you're supposed to have. And they put you on hold while they read some more script and they come back and they put you on hold again because they read some more script and they come back. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, it's just deadly uh, mm -hmm. from, from the, the perspective of what people are looking for. I want to go to Shelly on that too in closing here, because it's the same thing, you know, are you being heard? Um, the way communication is happening within families and friendships, maybe you're going, you know, for a day in the park and the person you're with is on the phone, texting, playing a game, and you don't know if you're being heard. And Nancy will always say, am I being heard? <laughs> you know, it's a pity she's not here. She'll, she'll put me in the fire there. But, you know, it's true. You know, it's like it, you if you're not listening, you need to say, give me a second. So I can hear you. Right. We've had to learn to do that because we, well, we we just keep talking, Nancy and I, you know, and we've had to learn to just say, hey, wait, give me one second. Okay, now, what right. can, let me hear with my full attention. You when know, you, when you become conscious of bringing honor and dignity mm -hmm. and regard to the relationship, then you behave differently because what you're doing is then you can. We, we all have a need for connection. We need mm -hmm. that connection. We need to be held. Why? Because we came out of a womb. We came out of a womb that- It feels, us. It feels electric. It, it touched us in every mm -hmm. part of our body. We were held for nine months like this, just touched the whole way. And we need that connection. When we Energy. praise somebody, when we give them acknowledgement, or we give them um, 
not necessarily approval because approval, interestingly enough, is tied to judgment. Even, even mm. worry is tied to judgment. Concern is tied to judgment, interestingly enough, which is a whole nother topic. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Because we need, we need to be able to first give ourselves the praise and acknowledgement. Then we're not seeking it and we're not overcompensating by thinking we need to be more than who we are because it feeds into the not enoughness. And we all have that too on some level, mm -hmm. but it feeds into it. When we can acknowledge, just like Dars talked about at the very beginning, when we can acknowledge that we did a good job about something and celebrate it and feel good about it, it fills our body with energy. Mm -hmm. All of this, what we're talking about is managing our energy. Mm. How do we manage our energy? How do we become the CEO, chief energy officer of our own existence? Mm. And how do we do that with as much ease and grace as possible with a lot of effing humor in there? Because yes. We do not, when we take ourselves too seriously, we strip the very joy out of our life. It's not so I can, I can run my life according to the wiggy butt tail yes. wags. I and can. can my tail professional. Wags. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you can you still should... <laughs> accomplish what you want to accomplish. Exactly. Happily. Exactly. Well, I think this is fantastic. This conversation, we could go, we could talk for hours on all of this. Yes. And the reality is, we do need that human connection. And when you think about what is going on with wars and anger in this country and around the world, if we can do everything we're talking about today, perhaps we'll rise up as better beings, you know, and yeah. really connect instead of disconnect. You know, the yeah. disconnect doesn't do anything. It comes back around, you know? Yeah. So I want to give everyone your website, Darswell. Um, I wanted to make sure that everyone knows uh, to tune into your show and also connect with you on your website. I have it as cfpinnovation.com. Is that right? Correct. Correct. All right. And, okay. and let me just note, I actually changed the format of my radio show. It's now called Profiles and Perspectives. It's nine o'clock. Oh. You it, it's it's nine o'clock. Uh you can you can find it at sixteen hundred WIDU.com on Fridays but between nine and ten. I flipped from strictly business to wanting to talk about people and interesting people and profiling different perspectives. So uh, uh Friday, two days ago, was actually the very first reformatting of the program. So oh, cool. that's kind of like hot off the presses. And my last comment is, is that Shelly is my friend for life. We didn't speak a whole lot about friends for life. It's the foundations of, of I think, uh, healthy relationships moving forward that you're going to be there for people, regardless of the trials and tribulations of life with honesty. Shelly likes to use the word regard uh, and caring for who they are. And that's really the foundations of, of what has sustained us and will continue to sustain the relationship that we have. Oh, I love that. And you yeah. keep that at the forefront when you communicate? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, I love that. I love that. And everyone, again, ShellyWizen.com. And Shelly is here every first Sunday because we like to go soul diving. Did we dive good today? Yeah. Did we go I in a deep so. dive? <laughs> we, we went into other areas I didn't know we were going to dive into, which yeah. I always think is we want that. You know, yes, that gives course. me the wiggy butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need the wiggy butt. But also keep up with Shelly. She's on TikTok. Uh, Tell tell everybody about what you're doing on TikTok because I don't. She's whipping up all kinds of good things. Uh, yeah, I do a lot of uh, cooking stuff on TikTok and just fun random things. One day I went to uh, West Hollywood and tried on Gen Z clothes and did a a silly little video on what I looked like in Gen Z clothes. It was pretty funny. You so. never know what's going to happen with Shelly. Bringing humor, bringing humor. Yes. And everyone, again, uh, the book is What Do You Bring to the Table? A Savory, Sensory, and Inspirational Guide to Living a Yummy, Delicious Life. Again, ShellyWizen.com is a place to go and keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. And you can see the article we were talking about as well on BlendRadioAndTV.com. Thank you both so much. It's been Thank a you. real pleasure to have you both on the show together. Thank, Thank you. you, Lisa. Thank you, Dars.